Good morning, everyone. Whoa. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's the Level 1 Podcast. How are y'all doing today? It's Monday, the uh, 20th of May, 2024. And I hope that you all are doing well and ready for a great show. Um, Starting a new fresh week here. And good stuff coming up right on the horizon. If you're not aware, we've got a brand new release tomorrow. We've got a humongous update balance patch and new character in Street Fighter 6 on Wednesday. Um, good stuff all around. In fact, coming up, one of the topics we're going to talk about today is another new thing coming out in just about a week. Did you know that Multiverses is going to relaunch on May 28th? Well, maybe you didn't know and you know now. Uh, this morning, they dropped the big trailer. And I want to talk a little bit about that because there were some exciting announcements in that trailer about the upcoming game. So we've got a, a little bit to talk about today. What I'd like to do is briefly recap what we did yesterday uh, with the React show. Uh, both both React shows, actually, because we had the DSP versus the Internet clip show. And then we had uh, the uh, Retro React of Dark Souls continuing last night. And I'd like to give you the results of you know what people thought and how that went. We actually have a, an announcement about next week's Retro React now based off of last night. Um, and we have a little bit of news today. I already mentioned Multiverses, which we're going to discuss. And then also, basically now, the whole lineup of events that are going to happen in early June. That essentially is E3 week without E3. Because if you remember, traditionally E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, would always happen around the very beginning of June. And this was the giant convention where all the different game companies would go to showcase their new games and products, new consoles, etc. Um, but during COVID, E3 fell by the wayside. And since COVID, there has not been an E3. And E3 is officially 100% canceled for good and never coming back. So now what we have every year is basically now like a week or two weeks where all these companies just kind of loosely do digital events to announce all their new games and things. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. I have the schedule of what actually is happening. And I want to tell you, at the very least, the ones that I'm interested in covering. Now, when I say interested in covering, I don't know if that entails that I'll actually like do a live React stream to them or if I just kind of watch and read up on all the stuff in them and then I summarize my thoughts and then I do maybe a, a stream where I do the recap reactions like I used to do. If you remember, I never did live reactions to those. <clears throat> I always would watch them live with you guys, take notes, and then immediately following when they went offline, I would do my own recap reaction stream. And that worked well for many years. But then last year, people said, hey, will you do a live react to these events? And I said, okay. So I did Summer Games Fest and Xbox, and I think I did Sony. And honestly, they did horribly. Like, people, there wasn't a lot of views. People weren't really caring that much about me doing the live reactions. In fact, in comparison, I did my own recap reactions separate from the live reaction and that did better like no kidding the views on that were actually bigger so i'm not exactly sure how to cover it this year i think what we should do is talk about it together you know we have a couple of weeks to figure this out so that way i can i can put it into my schedule however we want to do it uh i'm down for either <clears throat> i just want to do what people are going to care about i don't want to be doing a live react that no one cares about at the same time, I don't want to be doing a recap reaction and people would rather just have me talk about it here on my podcast. You know what I mean? I guess uh, <clears throat> we really need to investigate and discuss this a little bit differently this year. Okay? So that's what we're going to talk about on the show today. You know, we have any extra time to do anything else, of course, like uh, Q&A or anything like that. We will. By the way, I just want to say early on, it looks like I got some support. Thank you to the people who supported this stream early on. I really appreciate that. Uh, I shout out contributions near the end of the show. So just so you know, I'm very grateful and appreciative, but I, since I have these topics to talk about, um, I would like to talk about them first because the thing is, if I start doing shout-outs, we could get completely derailed in another direction and then never get to the topics at hand, okay? So thank you for the contributions. I will shout those out later. I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's get started, shall we? Let's let's start talking here at the beginning um, about what's going on. And yesterday was React Day. Once a week on Sunday, all day long, I basically split up the content with a day of all reacting, okay? And I like that because it allows me to not just do gameplay, 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 gameplay. It's variety. It breaks things up and, and makes it feel fresh. Yesterday, we did the two React shows. We started off with the DSP versus the Internet clip show on DSP Reacts. 
And, uh, you know, it went pretty standard, I would say, for a react show. You know, attendance was good. And, uh, you know, people were engaged and talking about the clips and everything, which was great. Good variety of clips, although admittedly there was some silly ones there too that were kind of dumb. But that's kind of the, the beauty of the show. You never know what you're going to watch. And there could be a week with some really dumb stuff. And there could be a week with really intelligent stuff. Or you get a mix. And uh, I like the variety we're getting. But something yesterday, it's kind of interesting. We watched every single clip that was submitted. All of the Ultra members who are guaranteed to get their clips watched and all of the actual uh, submission tier members also got their videos watched. Now, I'm not saying that we watched uh, each video at, at length. A lot of those videos were long. They were like 10, 20 minutes long. This is a clip show. So we only usually watch a clip for a few minutes at a time. Uh, it is a three hour show where I'm trying to get through something like 40 clips, you know? Um, so anyway, I liked the show a lot. Um, and that, those videos are obviously going live over the course of the week. But support was really bad. Now, that's not a regular thing. Usually for the React show, support's decent. So I'm not complaining and saying, oh my god, the sky is falling. I remember about a month ago, we had another React day that was actually quite slow. It's all right, okay? I just hope that it doesn't keep being a pattern. FYI, th that channel, DSP Reacts, doesn't really make a lot of ad revenue at all simply because half the videos end up getting claimed. I, I can tell you right now, part one of that show yesterday, the moment I uploaded it, immediately got claimed, no ad revenue. And I'm like, geez, every single time that I do that show, uh, <clears throat> that channel is profitable from two things, okay? Number one, memberships. People who are becoming members to nominate the clips to be watched on the show. So if you're one of the members on that channel, I really appreciate it. If you're an ultra member or submissions tier, thank you so much for making, being a part of that channel. Now, I'm also aware there's actually people who are becoming members on that channel who don't care about submitting clips. They just want to support my stuff. And I actually really appreciate that because I've been noticing regulars are coming by and just becoming a standard member. Now, standard membership, you can't nominate a video for the show, but people just want to support that channel anyway. I'm like, wow, that's really nice of you. If you come by and you become a standard member or gift standard memberships, that's still nice of you. So thank you to those who are doing that as well. Now, the other way that that channel makes profit is the live streams. So when I have a, a, a Sunday like yesterday where the stream didn't do well at all, <clears throat> yeah, that's disheartening. And I got to hope that that's not a pattern. So let's see how it goes next weekend. Hopefully it'll be a turnaround. And the thing is, in June, there's going to be more content on that channel. Like I just mentioned, in June, there's all of these gaming event conferences. I may do live reacts or I may do uh, my recap reactions. And when I do, they will be on that channel. Okay. So there will be additional content to watch on DSP React in the month of June. Maybe that'll boost it a bit. We'll see. Okay? All right. Um, so after that, last night, we did a retro React stream on my DSP throwback channel of Dark Souls 1. Now, this was continuing on from when we had done the first retro React of that game way back in February. Yeah, if you can believe it, it was actually that long since we had uh, waited to do it because people had wanted narrative-based games and they wanted me to actually get through the entirety of those games. So, you know, Heavy Rain took a month and a half. The Walking Dead Season 1 took a month and a half. <clears throat> so we're finally back to a point where now we can do different games again. And we had a poll. And even though I absolutely know that the poll was skewed by trolls, overall, it went to Dark Souls 1. And I was pleased with that. You know, I wanted to continue on with that playthrough and react further to my first run from 2011 when I am... Dude, I am so clueless in this playthrough. I still, I am, I am now 21 parts. So if you do the math, uh, it's about almost four hours into the game. I haven't figured out how to lock onto enemies yet. I don't even know how to do it yet. So I'm just swinging and missing wildly on most enemies I fight. It, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not even aware you can do it. Um, it took me all that time. The last part from last night, I figured out how to level up. So I played four hours in the game at level one and never increased any of my stats because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So, yeah, that's pretty representative of that original playthrough. It's a huge mess. It's cringeworthy, but it's damn entertaining when I get frustrated at stuff, especially now as, you know, someone 13 years later who knows all about FromSoft, who enjoys those games, who's done multiple runs of all of them, to actually look back at that original run and how ignorant I was and how I reacted to stuff is pretty darn entertaining. So... So it was good, I think. Uh, let's see, what did we do? I fought, refought the Taurus Demon and beat him. I figured out how to get the vendor working because I didn't even know how vendors work. Um, we got to the Drake's Bridge. We actually took the Drake's tail off and I got the Drake Sword. 
all right, which is actually a super early, uh, super good early game sword. Um, went to the next area and got lost. Like basically, I went to that next area with that boar wearing armor, and I sniped it. I cheesed it. I sniped it with like fifty arrows and killed it. But then I couldn't figure out what to do next. And the funny part is, I think the door's like right there, and I couldn't find it. So then I ended up backtracking and looking for some other door that doesn't exist. And I was like, oh, what? A fr it's frustrating. These years later, watching this, like, oh my god, it's so painful knowing what to do and seeing how I'm getting stuck. Uh, the audience had a good time. The support on the stream was pretty good. So people seemed to enjoy it. But at the end of the night, okay, I asked everyone on stream, I said, what would you guys like to do? W do you want to continue with Dark Souls? Because FYI, that original Dark Souls run is 66 parts. We're now 21 parts in. So if you do kind of the math, you realize probably that would be another four or five streams to wrap up the original Dark Souls 1 run. Keep in mind, I didn't beat it. I rage quit it. When I got to Blight Town, I had enough, and I literally completely quit the game. Okay? So, would you want more of that? And people were like, you know, it was fun, but rather than get stuck into the same game for another month and a half, why not we do some variety? And so we kind of talked it out and determined, hey, what I should do then is I should actually do... um the the second place game <clears throat> that was actually in uh the poll which actually was mario and sonic at the 2012 london olympic games super good co-op playthrough that i did many years ago in fact i would go to as far to say one of the best co-op playthroughs that i've ever done in my in my history like that playthrough is absolutely epic it's starring myself john rambo and and uh joe three player co-op each of us just messing around with different characters. And uh, by the way, I'm just trying to find to make sure that the, the stream uh, was for next week set up properly. There it is. It did. So, yeah. So, that stream's already set up for next week. It'll be Sunday night, May 26th. <clears throat> on the late night stream, the premiere of Mario and Sonic at the 2012 London Olympics. By the way, that game is actually from 2011, which I didn't realize. So the playthrough is actually a 2011 playthrough. Um, still using camera. Pointed out a TV. Had, didn't even go to direct capture at that point yet. Um, and man, I just remember... I, I, what I keep telling you guys is... There's some playthroughs that for me... They stand out. And the reason they stand out is because they're really truly like... Just super fun times. It's not me playing a game and challenging myself. But instead it's me playing a game just for fun. That playthrough 100% was a playthrough that we did. It was so fun to just mess around and be silly with it. And you know, not only did we do like the main game where you could play through various different events like you're in the Olympics. But then there's like this board game, it's called London Party, where basically your characters go around a board and it's your your human controlled characters, but also computer controlled characters doing various events and knocking each other back spaces on the board. And it was just such a fun experience, okay? <clears throat> so I cannot wait personally next week on Sunday night to react to that playthrough. If you've never seen it, you have missed out greatly. That is a playthrough that is so entertaining and just genuinely positive and fun. Whenever I'm down or I'm feeling like bummed out, if I need a pick me up, I go watch parts of that playthrough and I just laugh my ass off at how silly that playthrough is. It's so ridiculous. <clears throat> so I strongly recommend all of you head over to DSP Throwback. The stream is already there as a placeholder. Click on notify me when it goes live and set your clocks, be there. For next week's Retro React of Mario and Sonic at the London Olympic Games, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think we're going to have a great laugh riot time hanging out and talking about those old days. It's going to be super neat, okay? So good stuff coming next Sunday night, all right? So that was yesterday. Yesterday went, you know, a good good day. I had a good time. And uh, today we're getting back into the swing of things of full-time gaming. <clears throat> Today's going to be a good day. And the reason being, there's a couple reasons. Reason number one, because we get to chill. Right? We get to relax. We get to enjoy games. We get to interact. I love that. But also, today is the final day that I'm actually playing the year one version of Street Fighter VI. That's right. As of this Wednesday, Street Fighter VI gets its patch. This releases the final DLC character for Season 1, Akuma. But it also changes the game um, in a very different way. So basically, now the whole game is going to be rebalanced. All right. Every character is going to have different combos, different abilities. This is going to shuffle the deck per se. 
Some characters are going to be better. Some characters are going to be worse. Will it change anything for my characters that I play? I don't know. We actually won't know until Wednesday. On Wednesday, they've already said they even added new combo trials for each character to showcase the changes to each character so you can figure out uh, exactly, you know, what's new. So tonight is the last chance for me to really play Street Fighter VI in its original form before these big changes happen on Wednesday. And I see tonight, the late stream when I play Street Fighter VI, as kind of a celebration. A celebration of a year of awesome, competitive Street Fighter gameplay here on DSP Gaming. A celebration of my triumphant return to competitive fighting games in a major way, to a point where not only did I play Street Fighter VI, I actually got good at it. I got five characters to master, four of which arguably are four of the worst characters in the game. Right? Zangief, Lily, Honda, Dalsim are not anywhere near top tier in this game. Yet, I got them all to the master rank, and it was all with a positive win-loss ratio. It wasn't like, oh, I grinded endlessly, and I have, you know, 1,000 wins and 70,000 losses, but because the way the game works, I hit master. No, I actually legit hit master all with positive wins. So, that's a huge accomplishment for me. Someone who had been outside of the realm of competitive fighting games for nearly a decade. If you remember, the last time that I actually was trying to be good at fighting games was Street Fighter 4. You know, I haven't really cared about modern or competitive fighters in a very, very long time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ex I was so happy this last year. Like I said, this really was a triumph for me, an accomplishment. Something that, at my age, too, I'm in my 40s. It's not like, oh, I'm one of these young kids in 20s and 30s. I'm in my 40s. And to be able to actually do what I've done in this game was very, very meaningful to me. And I want to thank you all <clears throat> for that ride in the last year. For those who showed up, engaged, and supported all of that Street Fighter content, whether it was live or on demand, that means a lot to me. That you guys actually cared about me getting back into Street Fighter for the first time in a very, very long time. And listen, I'm not part of the FGC. I'm just going to say that again. I'm not part of the fighting game community. I haven't been for a very long time. I literally left on purpose. I saw when I was becoming a prominent YouTuber that there was a lot of bad feelings in the FGC about me because they were upset that I wasn't trying to be a competitive player but was getting popularity. So I decided to step out of that realm and I casually covered fighting games for about a decade and now to step back into that realm and actually try to get good at a game again, it's, it's a different kind of a feeling. It's an undertaking. I really am the outsider to that group. I'm not practicing with any people from the FGC. I'm literally just doing random online sets. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, thank you all. Tonight, the final stream of Year One Street Fighter VI is a celebration of all of that. All right? So that's going to begin at 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. And if, since this is essentially the final Year One stream of Street Fighter VI I'm doing, it's going to be all Blanca, my favorite and best character in Street Fighter VI. I'm going to do my absolute best tonight to bring in the wins and see how we do. I hope you will join me for that tonight if you can make it. It's a celebration and a send-off for year one Street Fighter VI. Okay? Cool. <clears throat> now, tomorrow, it's going to be the premiere of a new game, Hellblade 2, the se sequel to, obviously, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice from several years ago. Uh, I'm hoping that it's good. You know, everything that I've heard is that the game was well-designed and everything. And uh, hopefully, right, fingers crossed, it ends up being a really good game. Uh, I'm going to actually check it out the entire day. I'm going to be playing it first and second streams. You might say, oh, why are you playing it all day? You almost never do that. It's because there's so much going on in the next couple of weeks. I want to give enough time to feel like I got a good chunk into Hellbait 2 because I'm not going to be playing it again right away. So I want to get a good chunk in, and if I don't play it all day, I'm going to feel like I only got a few hours in and then now i got to wait a long time to play it again. You see? Jasper boy, what are you up to? Jasper's in office today. He joined me late. The reason he joined me late is a story. So, as I've told you guys, Jasper Kitty is the kind of kitty that wants to be the only pet and cat in the household. Okay? He wants absolutely no one giving attention to anything else but him. He's the attention-centric cat, as you can see. Right now, as soon as I mentioned it, he tried to steal the show by jumping behind me. You see how he does that? See, it's the specific timing he uses, right? So, this morning, I gave him his morning treat. He's eating his treat, and I'm making my bagel and coffee, okay? 
and I start to eat my bagel. And all of a sudden I hear this incredibly loud alarming noise. I don't even know what it is. So I run to the back door, okay? And this cat right here, Jasper Kitty, is in attack mode. He is angrily hissing and roaring in cat mode at the back door and he is thumping the glass. And I said, Jasper, what are you doing? What's going on? Outside, there's another cat. I think I've told you guys about this cat before. There's another cat outside that's a wild cat. Now, this cat doesn't look like originally it was wild. This cat totally looks like it was a domesticated cat that some very irresponsible cat owner just let loose to live outside permanently. Um, is This cat, I forget what kind it is, it has blue eyes and it has that like beige-ish fur, but you know how it's like, it's fluffy? and the ends of its fur kind of darkened. I don't I don't know what kind of cat it is, okay? I don't know the breed. I've seen the breed before, but I don't know the name. And that's what I mean, that's a breed. That's not an outdoor wild breed of a, of a cat. That's definitely a domesticated cat that someone let out at some point. But this cat has been in our neighborhood for about a year. On and off, we see this cat around. Sometimes it comes by and it just hangs out in the yard. Sometimes it wants, you know, it, it wants to interact with, with my wife and my wife will say hello and talk to it and stuff. But the thing is, with this, with him, we could never take in another cat. There's just no way. He would never go for it. I mean, he just sees this cat, and he's so upset that there is another cat anywhere near the house, he goes into attack mode. He is angrily hissing and going, rah, rah, and the other cat's just looking at him like this. Like, why are you acting like that? What the hell's your problem? I'm just here to hang out, right? <laughs> But he is so, he got so upset, legit upset. And you, I, he never does that, ever. He literally never, ever does that. So the funny part about this outdoor cat is that it doesn't have a collar. It has no identification at all. So it's definitely a wild cat. And the funny part is it's, it's actually like healthy and you can tell it's eating well. So I think what it is is there may be a couple people around here who are leaving food out for this cat on the regular and it comes by and eats stuff. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, I'll be honest, every once in a while, my wife puts out a little treat for it. It's not often, because we actually don't see the cat that much. But every once in a while, uh, <clears throat> every once in a while, we see it, and she might put out, like, a little treat or something, so it nibbles something on the back porch. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's how he is. So can you imagine if we actually brought a cat into the house? He would never go for it. He'd freak out, and then what would happen is, as he realizes this cat is here to stay he probably would start doing all kinds of bad behavior. He'd probably start peeing and pooping everywhere around, all over the house, biting things, destroying things. That's how cats are. If they're upset, they become destructive. That's their way of acting out to say, I don't like this situation. How dare you put me into it? So when people constantly ask, will you get another pet, a dog or a cat? We're like, you can't. That's the, this kitty right here is an awesome pet, an awesome cat. But at the same time, uh, he just acts out in a way that there's no way we would want to put him in that situation. You know, he wants to be the sole pet, so. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that was just a funny story that this morning he was doing that. And so what was funny is, I, usually he's in here when I start the stream, but he was downstairs still. I think he was there, like, interacting with the cat through the back door for a while, and then he decided to come up casually later. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, let's continue on. So tonight, as I just said, sorry I got distracted by this kitty here. Uh, tonight is the final Year 1 Street Fighter 6 stream. The send-off for the Year 1 gameplay until Year 2 begins on Wednesday, okay? Tomorrow is Hellblade 2 all day long. So if you're interested in the new Hellblade game, please come by all day long tomorrow. Both streams will be making big progress in it. Wednesday is the big update for Street Fighter 6, and I'll be playing it all day long. First stream, my intention is to check out Akuma. I want to bring Akuma into the trials mode, try out his trials, learn basics from the trials, then go into training mode and practice some of those combos and bread and butter tactics, and then go online with casual play and see how we do. Now, I'm going to do a second stream on Wednesday. That also is going to be Street Fighter Six. Now, the question is, do we want to continue with Akuma? Do I want to keep playing with this character and getting better with him? Maybe even, if I feel good enough, try to take him to rank. Or, instead of that, since the game has a giant rebalance, do I want to pick one of my other characters who I like and take them quickly into trials mode to see what their new combo trials are, to see what's changed, and then take them online and see if I can implement those changes in gameplay. We could do either. You know, we could do Akuma all day. No, you're not going to do that. We could do Akuma all day long, 
or we could balance it and do half Akuma and the late stream could be a different character, okay? So let's think about it. And I would like to hear your opinions on that. Um, and then we'll go from there, okay? Now I'm off from streaming on Thursday, but on Friday, the day stream will be more Hellblade 2. And dependent on how long the game is, I might even beat it. Because if you're not aware, Hellblade 2 is not a long game. People are saying it's around eight hours long. Well, if I play it all day Tuesday and then the mainstream on Friday, I might actually beat it. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to guarantee, but hey, if I beat it, I beat it. That's good. Then we can focus on other stuff, right? Then Friday night, this coming Friday night, Friday night fights, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for this? I'm doing something very special. Something I've not done in a very long time, and it is in in celebration of the Street Fighter Six update. But I'm not telling you what it is yet. All I'm going to say is you will not want to miss this Friday Night Fights. It's going to be something truly different that you're not expecting. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? <clears throat> That's all I'm saying. That's it. I'm not spoiling. I refuse to spoil. Because I want you to be there. I don't want you to miss it. Okay? Saturday, May 25th, is my big PC Indies Marathon event. All day long on Saturday, May 25th, I am playing indie games. Wait a minute. Is it May 25th? It is, right? I got the date right. Yes, it's May 25th. I'm playing indie games. What indie games, you ask? The games you're voting on right now by typing exclamation point indies into the chat. The poll will pop up, and then when you go to the poll, you can vote on which games you want to see more during that event. Um, basically, we're, the game we're definitely playing is called Noita, which I, I looked it up. It looks like a crazy pixel shooter RPG. It looks wild, okay? We're definitely playing that one. That's the one that got the most nominations. But all the others you guys are currently voting on to determine the order of what games we're going to play. So please vote in that poll. <clears throat> If you're not live on stream, that poll is just posted into the community tab of this channel. So just scroll down a few days and you'll find it. Please vote, and I can't wait. It's gonna be a fun idea, uh, a fun day. What are we gonna be doing? All those indie games, so probably like four games minimum, maybe five, it depends on time. We're also gonna be doing some food. I'll order some food out and we'll have a, a feasting with Phil. And I'll probably have a few drinks. You know, we have, I have different drinks. I have a uh, mojito mix, I have Long Island iced tea. I have various different things I can drink during the day while we're playing these cool indie games. The other awesome thing about indie marathons is that usually we find a couple games during these marathons that I like so much and you like so much that you ask me to continue them. And just to be honest with that lineup that I'm seeing, I think there will be at the very least one or two games that likely people are going to want me to continue in June. So I can't wait. That's going to be a fun thing. Now, Sunday will still be React Day, but then Monday, We'll be up in the air. Will I need another stream to beat uh, Hellblade? Or will we have already beaten Hellblade? Will we bring back Fallout 4 that day? Or maybe I should do all Street Fighter 6 that day. Because at that point, think of it. I'll only have played Street Fighter 6 Wednesday and Friday night. And that's it. In a whole week of this update being out. So next week, basically the second half of the week, we're playing it by ear. However, here's the other big thing. All right, you ready for this? One week from tomorrow, May 28th is the official real release of Multiverses, okay? And this actually leads into my next topic, so we're just gonna go ahead and talk about it now. Multiverses officially launches on Tuesday, May 28th. It is a free-to-play game. I'm gonna repeat that. It's actually free to play. And a lot of people weren't expecting that. They thought that when Multiverses went away <clears throat> like a year and a half ago, that basically uh, it was gonna go away for good and come back as a purchase game. It's not. It's free to play, but what it's looking like is that there's going to be a ridiculous amount of microtransactions in this game in order to try to make profit, okay? So you might say, well, what does that mean? So they showed off today, this morning, the official trailer intro movie of Multiverses. And man, it showed off a lot. It basically showed off, you know, a lot of the, the characters that were already present in the early beta, you know, a year and a half ago. Um... But then it started to showcase newer things, <clears throat> like Joker, who was just announced for the game, and he's essentially Joker seems to be the main villain of this game. Like, they're positioning him to actually be, like, the big bad, who all the other guys apparently work for him. I guess there's actually going to be, like, maybe a story mode, and he's the villain, okay? Um, so we got Joker, by the way, voiced by Mark Hamill, which is super awesome, because Mark Hamill is probably the best 
you know, you know, voiced Joker ever. I still think that Jack Nicholson is the best live action Joker. But anyway, <clears throat> well, either Jack Nicholson or Cesar Romero from the Adam West series. But um, anyway, uh, so not only is Joker the big bad, but they actually they, it's a big cinematic thing. And some of the things they show off are pretty cool. First of all, it opens up at all places. Guess where the, the trailer for Multiverses opens up? The Warner Brothers water tower at Warner Brothers Studios. And everyone sees it, including me. When this started playing, I'm watching, I'm like, wait a minute. That's Animaniacs. That's where the cartoon Animaniacs starts and ends. That's where the Animaniacs live in the water tower. Why would they literally have the water tower stage in the game if the Animaniacs are not going to be in the game. So I believe they will be. Now, I don't know if they'll be launch characters, but I think the Animaniacs will be in this game. That not only Think about that. You got Yakko, Wacko, Dot, Pinky, and the Brain, and you could even have other characters from Animaniacs they could add over time, right? So that's crazy. Like That would actually expand the cast huge. So anyway, at, during the course of this trailer, you know, they're showcasing it's basically all the different characters that are going to be in it. And then at the end, at the very end, all the heroes chase down the Joker into this, what looks like a throne room. And the Joker is sitting there, and then all of a sudden, two new villains appear. Get this. Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th and Agent Smith from The Matrix are two other characters in the game now. And they were revealed this morning for the very first time. Now, they look cartoony, but... I mean, that is crazy. They're throwing everything into this game. Now they've got movie characters. It's not just cartoons and comic books and, and general pop culture. They've got movie characters now being thrown into this, which is crazy, right? So now think of that potential. That means later on they could add Morpheus or Neo, or they could even add other horror villains under the WB, you know, uh, universe. So that's right. Keanu Cream says... The Jason Universe. You're right. We were just joking about this a couple days ago. That there was a major announcement that there's going to be a Jason Universe of content. And the first piece looked like it was going to be Fortnite. Well, guess what? That's a bullshit trick because it's multiverses. Yes, Jason is in multiverses as a character next Tuesday. So anyway, um, you know, do I want to check out multiverses next week? Yes, I do. For sure, I want to try. I liked multiverses when it was out a year and a half ago. I played a lot of it. Remember, I played it for several months. I was getting good at it. You know, I was very good with Velma. I was good with Bugs Bunny. I was good with Iron Giant. There was a few characters that I was really starting to like and get and and enjoy using. Um, uh, but ha what sadly happened was, I'll be honest, you guys didn't like it as much. Now, keep in mind at that time, I hadn't been into competitive fighting games. You know, Street Fighter Six wasn't out yet. So maybe it just was that there was no there was no desire for that yet. There was no bug on this channel for people to see me play fighting games at that point. I don't know. But I actually liked the game way more, but you guys weren't liking it. So I, after a few months, people stopped showing up to the streams, and I said, I guess I'm just going to stop playing it, and I dropped it. And I was sad. I was actually quite sad to drop it because I really was enjoying myself. Um, <clears throat> Maybe now, a year and a half later, with Street Fighter Six now part of my regular schedule, fighting games back into the mix, me playing at a better level, right? And now maybe with this being the official full release of the game, having a bigger roster and everything, maybe now people would be more interested in seeing me play it, right? So we'll find out. I am going to play it. So just think about that. This week we got Hellblade 2 and Street Fighter 6. Next week we finish Hellblade 2, we continue Street Fighter 6, then we got Multiverses, right? So there's crazy new stuff coming out. And then, like I said, during this Indies Marathon, we might find a game or two you guys want to see me play. So now the month of June could end up being Street Fighter 6 with Akuma and Rebalance, Continuing Fallout 4, Multiverses, and Indie Games. All balanced. That sounds like a great month to me. And then, of course, this all leads up to Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC for Elden Ring in late June. So, great, right? Like, this is... the, the Basically, the schedule is making itself. I don't even have to do any work here. The schedule is setting itself up for success. And I'm happy. This is good variety of stuff. This is entertaining stuff. I, I'm having... I'm really excited. For what's coming up this week is going to be a sweet week and then continuing on i'm really 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 you know digging the variety and i hope that you guys are too okay <clears throat> jasper everyone loves seeing you on stream today you're really hogging the camera you know that you're hogging the camera ah he's ah he's hogging the camera he's taking all the attention away from me now lilica says what about paper mario well paper mario was never on the schedule to begin with 
I told you guys I'm interested in Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door remake. I still am. But we are purposefully still staying away from any kind of lengthy RPG experience, with the exception being Fallout, because that's a Western RPG. It's different. Okay? I don't want to get roped into another lengthy RPG. Do I want to play an RPG? Yes, I do. And I think I want I want to play an RPG maybe over the summer. And maybe Paper Mario is the one. Because that's one I've always wanted to go to. All right? I've always wanted to play it. I had it on GameCube. And had enjoyed it on GameCube, but I dropped it. I never finished it. To actually be able to play it in a modern setting with an audience like today would be really awesome. So that's one that I'm definitely considering for the future, possibly over the summer. Okay? Cool. All right. So I hope all this sounds good to all of you. All right? Um... It's pretty exciting to me. Like I said, the schedule is making itself, and that's exciting. When when <laughs> I don't have to even think about, oh, let's do this game, let's do that game. When things are falling into place, that's really cool. Like I know, for example, there's a particular game I know we're playing Saturday that I think people are going to want to see me continue. It's going to be like a, an indie game that people want to see, you know, keep going, including me. So I think it's going to be a good a good marathon and some good stuff coming up. Jasper, I don't recall the last time that you were on camera this much. Is, is he purring into the mic? Did you hear the purrs? Because I can hear the purrs. Did he purr into the mic like that? <laughs> oh, you're silly. Okay, so... That about covers the regular stuff I wanted to talk about. However, the other part that I want to talk about of this show is I want to talk about all of these gaming events, these announcement events that are going to happen in June... And I want to see which ones we're more interested in. And, and I want to talk with you guys. Open discussion. So we're going to have some interaction now in the chat. How do I cover these events? All right, because here's the thing. There's multiple ways that I have covered these kind of events in the past. Okay, typically what I would do when there was an E3, there would be an E3 week, all right, of basically I would watch all of the E3 press conferences live as they were happening. We would actually sit in a chat like this and I, we would watch it together. Like I would rebroadcast those things on my channel and then we would watch it together and talk and chat and I would be taking notes. And then as soon as that broadcast would end, I would go live with my own and I would say, hey, it's time for the recap reactions where what I would do is summarize everything that we just saw in that event and tell you what I thought about each thing and at the end tell you what I thought was good and bad. All right, people loved that. Like that coverage of E3 every year annually did well, went down as something great that I do annually, and everyone looked forward to it every single year. Then I would argue, a year or two before COVID hit, people started to ask me why I didn't do live reacts. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. I really didn't. I didn't even understand what it meant. And they were like, don't you know that everyone else on the internet just live reacts to E3? When E3 is going on, they rebroadcast it on their channel. They're over it. They, they have a face cam or whatever over it, and they live react. They'll be going, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Or, oh, I can't believe it. Or, oh, that looks bad. Live. They do it live. They wouldn't do a recap reactions video like I would. They would literally just live react to everything. Now, some people would be more intelligent about it, and others would be complete cartoon character idiots, completely over-exaggerating everything they did, and it became like a dumb-ass thing for idiots to watch because there was no content to it. It was just them going, duh, constantly freaking out to stupid announcements, right? So, the thing was, in general back then, I said, you know, I don't think that live reacting like that adds anything. I think that my style of watching it, letting that information sink in, me taking notes, and then letting it, let, you know, let me get an opinion about each thing, and then I can talk about it in my recap reactions video after, I felt like that was a better way to do it, okay? But people insisted, no exaggeration, every year people are like, you're an idiot, you're a dinosaur, you're not doing what everyone else does, you're not following the trends, Right? You, you got to do a live react. We want you to do live reacting. And every year I resisted. I resisted. Well, last year, I launched a channel called DSP Reacts. Literally, one of the intentions of the channel was that this would be when I would live react to these events. Okay? And so I announced last year, for the first time ever, I would be live reacting to Summer Game Fest, the Xbox event, and I think I even said the Sony event and other things. I said, I will live react to them. Okay? And so we did. When those events happened, right here, right there on that channel, I rebroadcasted them. I was there with Facecam. I was live reacting. Okay. So the first thing I would do is the live react, and then after that, 
I did my own recap reactions, just like I used to. So basically, I did two videos in one. It was like two pieces of content for each event. The live streams actually did poorly. Like, attendance-wise, they were just okay, not great. Support was abysmally low for those streams, okay? Then when I did my recap reactions, all right, actually got better, and then the views on the recap reactions did better than the live reacts. So, to me, I'm like, I here's the thing. Maybe if I had jumped on the whole live react bandwagon years and years ago when everyone else was doing it, right, and it was becoming prominent, maybe then people would have cared more. But I think what's happened is I've been established on the internet for over a decade as the guy who does these recap reactions that are more intelligent, more well thought out. It's not just me doing, oh, ooh, oh ooh, cartoon faces as a live reactor. It's me actually trying to add something smart or, or interesting or insightful uh, to what I'm saying or, or, or how I'm reacting to the content, right? So I'm a different, I'm a different animal, right? I really am. I'm a different kind of guy because of the kind of content I put out. So here's the thing. This is now year two. And, and now what we want, I want to do, just so you guys know, I have the schedule, the actual schedule of all of the events coming up. All right, let's go through it. Here's what's coming up. On May 31st, there's a horror game award showcase. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's gonna it's gonna showcase like all horror themed video games or not. Then on June seventh at nine p.m. BST, which I believe is like like eight, like like in the morning or afternoon my time. I have to look up the times. So I don't have these times. The summer game fest. So June seventh, okay, is summer game fest. And FYI for those wondering, it's a Friday. Then on June eighth is a future games show, which I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably gonna skip because usually it's not very interesting. But then on June 9th, which would be uh, a, a Sunday, is actually the Xbox Game Showcase. So this is supposed to be the big one from Xbox showcasing all their upcoming games. <clears throat> if you wanna know the truth, it, that's gonna be an interesting one because with Xbox literally laying off a ton of their game studios that they just bought, especially Tango Gameworks that just had a hit game last year, but then having Activision open a new studio in the same week, dude, all eyes are going to be on that Xbox event. People are going to be like, this is make or break. Either they come out of the gate strong and they have like concrete explanations for what's going on in that company, the direction they're going, or they're going to crash and burn, right? So I feel like that's a, those are huge ones. If anything, out of what I just mentioned, Summer Game Fest on June 7th and the Xbox Game Showcase on June 9th, those are definitely ones that I want to cover in some capacity, okay? Now, the question is, what capacity? That's an important question, right? <clears throat> Let me actually go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put summer. Wow, that's not how you spell summer. Games. Wow, that's not how you spell games. I cannot type on phones. I just can't do it. So Summer Games Fest is June 7th, and the Xbox Direct is June 9th, okay? Um, so, I'm interested in covering both. The question is, how do you guys think I should cover them? Do you feel there is any value at all in me live reacting to those events? In fact, let me, let me quickly take a look at the actual times they really are. So... Summer Game Fest 2024. When is it? When is when is it? Date and live stream details. <clears throat> Two PM. It's 2 p.m. Pacific time, and that means actually the Xbox would be 1 p.m. I'm actually put the times in here too, so we know exactly the times everything's going on. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. So, 
with those times, I could absolutely live react to them, right? I could. I could live react. Or I could do what I usually do. Instead of live reacting, I could sit there and take notes and we could sit here in the chat, all right? And we could discuss what's going on together. And then after the fact, I could do a recap reaction stream where I recap and react to what just happened. If Summer Game Fest is 2 p.m., that means their broadcast will end at 4, but that's my dinner time, you know? So essentially what might happen is I stream games. Like maybe I do a quick podcast and we actually stream games for a couple of hours before. And then I, I watch Summer Game Fest with you. And then the live stream at night, we do the recap reactions. Or we could, again, same thing. I could I could start my stream or end my pre-stream or my podcast early, do a couple hours of gameplay. We could live react to the event first. Then I could go on break for dinner. And then I could come back later that night on the late stream. Then I could do my recap reactions. Okay? That's what I'm thinking. Anyway, I'm thinking that's how we would have to go about it. And, you know, same thing with the Xbox event. But the Xbox event starts at 1. So with the Xbox event, if it's really only like an hour, which it probably is, probably not longer than like an hour, hour and a half, then maybe we could do a live react and then the recap reactions right following it. And then I could still do a late stream that night. Right? <clears throat> Battle Duck says, I really like the way you did it last year. I don't know what happened with the views and attendance. Many people wanted to see it themselves without getting spoiled. I literally don't know. For so many years, people said, we want to see you live react to it. So I did. And literally, the stream was like dead. Like, there weren't a lot of people. The support was almost non-existent. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I even said to everyone, I would have done better playing a game today than live reacting to this thing. You know? There was no point to doing it. The recap reactions on the flip side of that did well. The, the views were good and the stream did good. So it was like, what did I even do this for? You know? <laughs> now, by the way, there is also going to be a Sony event and there's also going to be a Nintendo event coming up in June. I don't believe that the exact dates and times of those are set yet. Right now, all we know is Summer Game Fest and the Xbox event are the big ones. So once we have the, the information of the Sony and Nintendo events, I'll also look into those. Typically, the Nintendo events are like 8 in the morning. There's no fucking way I'm doing that. I'm just, I'll just fucking watch it myself, and I'll do a recap reaction. But that's that's Nintendo, Nintendo for doing it so early. It's stupid as shit. But usually, Sony's more reasonable, okay? <clears throat> so anyway, I need your feedback. We have a couple weeks to figure this out. We have until June 7th to literally figure this out. Would you like to see the live react? Does the live react not matter to you, right? <clears throat> How do you want to have this covered? Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. We have over two weeks to, to brainstorm, all right? And uh, so it's June 7th, June 9th right now are the two big ones. But then it looks like later in the month there'll be more for Sony and Nintendo. But once we figure out the initial how to do it, then we'll know what to do in the future, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> all right. So anyway, okay. That's, that's what I have to talk about today. The next couple of weeks are going to be absolutely exciting around here. Tons of new games, updates, all kinds of good stuff going on. The schedule writes itself, plus the Indies Marathon, and that's probably going to turn into more playthroughs. I'm very excited for late May, early June. I think it's going to be great stuff here on DSP Gaming. Okay? And of course, next week, Mario and Sonic and the Olympic Games react on the DSP Throwback channel. That's also going to be fire. Like, it's going to be great stuff going on right now. I hope that you guys will join me for all of it, okay? Cool. These React events, that's what we got to figure out. Let's start discussing. discussion. If you have opinions on it, please share your opinions on how I should cover these, okay? <clears throat> okay. Now, let's do some shout-outs. There were people who actually contributed earlier, and I told you I hold off on shout-outs because I wanted to get through all the topics I wanted to get through. Well, guess what? I got through all the topics. So we're going to get to shout-outs, and... Uh, Thank you to everyone who chills with me and supports my content. I really appreciate that. So many ways to support DSP Gaming, including Super Chats, Super Stickers, memberships, gifted memberships to the community, or tips. All those are greatly appreciated. Personally, I consider if I hit the $50 tips goal on a stream, a successful stream. That's my like one goal that I really have. But anything is greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you so much. Let's get to shout outs. So we start off this morning with Chris the Gamer, who became a member of the channel. 
Thank you, Chris the Gamer, for the new membership. I appreciate that. And then Game Steve Stevie. Game Stevie. Then a super chat. Thank you, Game Stevie. Then Chris the Gamer did a big $20 super chat. Thank you to Chris the Gamer for that. So two super chats early on. Uh, then we had Terribly Joy, who did a $2 super chat and says, Hey, Phil, if Resident Evil 1 gets another remake, are you down? Yes. I'm of the impression that Resident Evil 1 should get a remake in the style of Resident Evil 2 and 3. It, you know, when they did that remake of Resident Evil 1 in the early 2000s, it just updated it for the early 2000s. Now, we're talking crazy technological leaps. Just look at how good Resident Evil 2 Remake was when they took that classic and they reimagined it as a modern game with modern graphics and gameplay mechanics and things. It was a masterpiece. I still, to this day, feel Resident Evil 2 Remake is the best modern survival horror game. I think it's actually better than Resident Evil 7 and 8. I really do. So, I would love to see them take the original Resident Evil and, and expand upon it and turn it into an awesome game like they did with Resident Evil 4 Remake. So, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I would be all over it, for sure. And then Debo did a super chat saying, we call LTG Malibu's most wanted in the hood. I don't think anyone on the stream cares about LTG, Debo, including me. Just being honest, like, there's, <laughs> you're kind of wasting your breath. I get it, it's like a joke, but it's just, it's not funny because no one cares about LTG here, you know? So, thanks for the super chat. But, uh... The message kind of lost on this audience, all right? All right, so thank you for that. Let's get Debo on the leaderboard being the latest Super Chatter. Cool. All right, so that's the shout-out so far. I have no tips whatsoever to shout-out, okay? Nothing. So once a tip comes in, if a tip comes in, I'll shout it out. And thank you in advance to anyone who supports the stream today. By the way, another way you can support the stream is by giving it a like. Simply giving it a like for engagement. That helps the channel too. I don't mention that as much as I used to. Because I used to talk about it all the time and kind of got tired of just saying the same shit all the time. But likes help. If you're watching this on demand, liking this podcast and leaving comments on it helps. Becoming a YouTube premium subscriber helps. It's basically the same as watching all the ads on this channel. And if you're becoming a YouTube premium subscriber, this is something that I got wind of recently. You can get YouTube Music, which is another app that comes for free if you're a YouTube Premium subscriber. You can subscribe to all of my podcasts. Like, you can subscribe to The Daily Wrap. You can subscribe to this show. And then you get it daily in your feed as if it's a podcast on, like, iTunes. It's pretty neat the way that they've set it up like that. So you can just have a whole queue of these things. You can, you know, you got a daily commute. You listen to it when you're at work. Or maybe you're in school and you don't fucking care about your teacher, so you listen to this show instead. I mean, I don't think you should do that. I don't recommend it, but I can't stop you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, but you can do that. Like I think that's a great way to get the show delivered to you. So maybe consider becoming a YouTube Premium subscriber. That would help me out and you out. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Luthace just did a super chat. Says you should do a poll for a Project 7 React. You mean re-reacting to Project 7? I've already done that. You may not be aware because it was many years ago, but it was actually during my my 10 year anniversary in 2018. I actually reacted to the entirety of Project 7. We watched the whole thing together live on stream. But it's just funny because I mean, it was six years ago, so probably a lot of people don't even remember that, right? But uh, yeah, I totally watched it and I added all kinds of color commentary and everything to it. Although it may be fascinating not to do it again. Keep in mind that since then, I've reacted to the John and Howard video that they made about me that was very negative in 2015 where they talked a lot about their experience in Project 7. So now watching Project 7 back may be a completely different experience than when I did it that first time. I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting suggestion. I don't know if people would want to see me do it again. I didn't do a formal event of it. It was part of a long-form anniversary React event that I did in 2018. <clears throat> um, Let's see here. Uh, okay, I got my first tip of the day. I received a $4.20 tip from Bruh. I don't want another remake. Give me a Dino Crisis. Well, I think a lot of people liked Dino Crisis, but this is, was there only one Dino Crisis, or was there a sequel? I don't know. But a lot of people say that, you know, they like Dino Crisis. It's kind of the same in the same vein as Resident Evil. For them, it's like a survival horror classic from Capcom from back in the day. And they're upset that it seems like Capcom has just forgotten that it ever existed. In fact, wasn't it funny that last year 
they released that dinosaur game and everyone thought it would be Dino Crisis. In fact, doesn't one of the protagonists look like the main character from Dino Crisis, right? And then come to find out it's just an online co-op shooter and everyone was like, wow, that game lasted 10 seconds and no one cares about it again, right? <clears throat> there were actually three Dino Crisis games? Wow, I didn't even know that. Huh, that's interesting. All right, so guys, now we're going to open up the show to open Q&A, discussion. If contributions come in, I will shout them out. But if you tag me in the chat, we're going to do some, some kind of open back and forth discussion, okay? So particularly, hey, you have any opinion on anything I mentioned on the show today, the upcoming schedule, or for example, the how I should cover these upcoming events, let me know. Avery says, would you ever consider a gaming deals segment to highlight good gaming deals as we continue to be financially responsible? It would be great to take your take on that. The thing is, there's already a bunch of people who cover that kind of stuff. Like, isn't there, isn't it, um, there's like a cheap-ass gamer who has been doing that for like over a decade. There's, uh, people on Twitter who you can follow, or I say Twitter, oh God, it's X now. There's no more Twitter, they deleted it. There's no more Twitter.com, it's just X.com now. There's people on X who literally their entirety of their, um, their existence on X is just posting deals. So... I think there's enough people already doing that. I don't necessarily see myself as being someone who's going to be known for that. So I don't really know what it would add. Plus, wouldn't that even just extend the length of my podcast even longer? To be honest, I don't want to sit around staring at fucking deals and gaming price tags all day. That's not the kind of guy I am. I'm interested in news, not in pricing. You know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, so I would say probably not. Jasper, what are you trying to chew my... He's trying to chew my USB wire now. That's probably why my Xbox controller has malfunctioned a little bit recently. And how much you want to bet that that wire's busted right where he's chewing it. Anyway, um, I received a $2 tip. I'm watching your LNOR playthrough. This makes me want to play it again or want to watch you do a second playthrough. Would you ever play it again? I did. When LNOR was re-released for PS4, I played it again in full 1080p and live stream. Okay, but I'm trying to remember exactly when that was. I think it was before. Wasn't that before I was an interactive live streamer? I can find out. Hold on. I'm trying to remember exactly when I did it. Let's let's actually find that out. Hmm. L A Noir. Let's find out. L A Noir remastered playthrough. Here it is. It was December of 2017. Yup. December of 2017. So I was an interactive streamer at that point. I could see there was full face cam for that playthrough. Yup. So it's been a while. It's been seven, six to seven years. But I did do a second run of it. Um, so would you really want to see me play it again? Uh, it's up to you. What what I was thinking, because this is what people are actually su suggesting, is rather than me replay it a third time, once that playthrough is in its entirety on DSP Throwback, I do a retro replay to it, where we watch it together and I react to myself playing it originally. I think that might make more sense, rather than just replaying the same old game a third time, right? To actually get reactions to my original run and how it was. I think that's how that would maybe be a little better. Oh, every day, people on DSP Throwback are like, are you going to do a retro react to this? And I'm like, we'll do her two parts in. There wouldn't be much to react to yet. You know, maybe long term, sure. But we have to get enough of it live before we can do that, right? Felix DeMate says, I'm eating an Italian sub right now and it's pretty good. When was the last time you had one? I have no clue. I have no idea. Usually when I go to a sandwich shop, I don't get an Italian sub. I would get like, uh, if I go to like um, Jersey Mike's, sometimes I get their chicken Philly, or sometimes I would get like um, like a club sandwich or something like that. Uh, I used to regularly get the Italian BMT at uh, Subway, and I would get the Italian BMT with provolone cheese when they used to have the sweet and hot peppers plus banana peppers, lettuce and tomato, Salt, vinegar, and mayo. Yep. And, it would, and I would have it on the cheese bread. I forget what it's called. Some kind of cheese bread. And I would have them toast it. I thought that was pretty good. But you had to, like, load it. You had to load it up to make it good. 
Just the base sandwich is terrible at Subway. By the way, they don't even have the sweet and hot peppers anymore at Subway. They got rid of those like 10 years ago. <laughs> so. Double M, where have you been? Jasper was literally on camera for like 15 minutes earlier. He says, where's Jasper today? We haven't seen him. I guess you watched the show with your eyes closed. Expand Dong, how you doing? He says, the Nintendo Pirates are rioting. Paper Mario has not leaked. Nintendo ripped the game leaks weeks ahead of release issue in the bud by canceling all Walmart and Amazon pre-orders for the game. Did they really? So Nintendo just said, nah, fuck it. We know that people keep getting the game early through physical pre-orders and they canceled the physical pre-orders? Wow. <laughs> that is something else. And so the game isn't leaking. Hey, I hate to say it, but I think these, these game companies really need to do a better job. These games are all leaking so early now. It's good to hear that if someone probably, probably put their fucking foot down and had enough of this shit, you know? Thank God. People person says, the last time I went to Subway, I asked for a receipt. The worker angrily looked at me and said, if you want it, go take it, and held the stare. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? How would you go to... Okay. I'd be like, okay. And I'd walk behind the counter where you're not supposed to be. And I would open the fucking register and just take the whole reel <laughs> for the seat out and say, you told me to do it, stupid. Did you not, you fucking asshole? Here. Here, you want your fucking receipt? And I'd slam it down his face. All right, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> oh boy alright we got a little bit of extra time if anyone would like to chat please uh, tag me or uh, you know again if a shout out comes out you know, if a contribution comes in I'll shout it out people person says the receipt printed out of the register I politely asked for but the pissed off this pissed her off apparently I was supposed to yank it myself why don't you just make the food yourself too right in fact why don't you just receive payment for working at the store? Why not just actually take money out of the register and say, well, this is my payment for coming in and making my own sandwich. <laughs> right? There you go. <clears throat> Double M says, growing up in your youth, did you have a dream of working on GameStop? Absolutely not. No. When I was growing up, there was no GameStop. I'm, dude, I'm 42 years old. There were no like game stores like that when I was growing up. The closest thing would have been like Babbage's or software, etc. And those were like computer stores, right? It actually wasn't until like the early 90s that dedicated game stores like Electronics Boutique started opening. Um, and even then they were hybrid like console, but also PC stores. And it wasn't until like mid to late 2000s that they became more dedicated just console game stores. So, you know, no, not really. I was never, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I wanna work at a game store. No, that, that wasn't even a job, right? When I was growing up, no. What's up, Game Boy? Good to see ya. When was the last time I ate at KFC? I legit don't know. I legit couldn't answer that question. I can't remember at all. Last time I ate at KFC. People person says, this is not one of the many reasons I'm a Jersey Mike's man. Yeah, Jersey, listen. Subway is literally the bottom of the barrel. All right? It really, it just is. At this point, there's so many other competing sandwich shops that are a little bit more expensive, but are just far superior in customer service, in selection of, of, of actual sandwiches you can get, in the quality of the meat and the veggies and the bread you're going to get. It's worth it to pay a few extra dollars. There was one thing when it was a $5 foot long deal at Subway, and you could walk in and get any foot long for five bucks. All right. Those days are long gone. Now, if you want a foot long at Subway, it's like eight, nine dollars. So don't fall for the trap of going in the subway, literally go next door, right? Pay $2 extra for your sandwich and now get a giant sandwich with double the quality and people who actually care about you and will actually make you nice food. They're not assholes, right? There you go. Parrot Solo, 36 months as a member, diamond crown achieved, amazing. Thank you, Parasolo. And he says, looking forward to your Akuma coverage. Me too. 
Me too. I'm very much looking forward to my Akuma cover. I hope the character's good. It, it would be the first Shoto I'm actually playing in Street Fighter VI. You know, I tried Ryu during the beta. I wasn't impressed. I didn't even bother with fucking Ken. So hopefully Akuma, I'll be interested. I've liked Akuma in various Street Fighters. Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Three, and Street Fighter Four. I did play Akuma. He wasn't my main character, but he was a character that I played and was interested in. So I guess we'll see. <clears throat> okay. Um, I received a two dollar tip. Have you ever played an indie game called SMD Super... What? Uh, I don't think this is real. Just listen to this. SMD Super White Sauce Brothers. A cooking game about hot dogs and white sauce. Are you like four years old? How stupid do you think people are that they would believe that? Did you ever play the game Super Shove a Cactus Up Your Dick Hole Brothers? Where it's two brothers just shoving cactuses into their dicks? <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Thank you for the $2 tip, but could you at least come at me with something better than that? Sheesh. Come on, man. You put at least a little bit of effort into it. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? What is going on? All right. What else would you guys like to talk about today? Surprisingly, no feedback whatsoever about these upcoming events in June, which is what I'm looking for, right? When's the last time I actually bought a cactus plant? Never. I've never owned a cactus in my life. Never. Not once. It might be nice to have a little uh, succulent, right? Or a little, uh, what, what is it called? Cactuses, they have a word for them. I would just be nervous about Jasper being silly and not knowing what it is and poking himself. Do I have any houseplants? No. I did at one point. Um, it didn't go so well. I had three houseplants. I had two big ones, and I had one little one. One of the big ones I had in the hallway out here, and what ended up happening was within a year, it just wasn't getting sunlight, and it died because it didn't get sunlight. I was feeding it. I was giving it food and water, but without proper sunlight, it just couldn't live, and it died. I had one downstairs in my downstairs corner of my, my uh, uh, dining room. That one was doing well, but then the pot started to leak and the, all the muddy water went into my wood floor and basically I have a spot on my floor now that's all fucked up from this thing leaking. So I just had to get rid of it. It sucked. And then I had a third plant and this one was a small one. And this one, some fucking spider laid eggs in it. So one morning I wake up and I'm like, something doesn't look right. And I'm looking and there's basically translucent web all over this plant and thousands of baby spiders are crawling all over it. And I said, oh, shit. And I threw it into the garage, grabbed a can of bug spray, sprayed the fuck out of it, put it in a bag, and got the fuck rid of it. <laughs> so, and that was it. After those three plants, I was like, I am not fucking with this ever again. This is this was a big disaster. I'm done with house plants. Uh, I received a $4.20 tip from Umariel. Hold on a second here. Let's play your animation. Thank you, Umariel. And they said, NYC Noir as a sequel would be very dope. Too bad Rockstar prints money with Red Dead Redemption and GTA. It'll never happen. Yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't know... The whole idea of L.A. Noir, it was so cool because at the time, it was heavily, heavily covered by the media. And everyone was saying it's going to be revolutionary. Look at this face capture of a technology that really captures all these nuances in the actors' faces and everything in the game. And it did. I thought that like it was the best-looking game for like narrative you know, facial movements ever in any video game. The problem was the entire game's development was a shit show. Like that Team Bondi that actually made the game was insanely overworked, underpaid, and put to the grindstone to fucking make that game. And when it came out, it was great and critically acclaimed, but immediately after that, they closed Team Bondi because there was so much internal strife about the game that basically Rockstar said it ain't even worth it. Like, we literally don't want to continue on with this 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 
issue that was created th during the development of the game. So they just closed the whole goddamn studio, which is really fucked up to think about it because they worked their asses off to release the game. And then they just said, oh, well, let's, let's sweep this under the rug. And they closed the whole thing. Um, I agree. Like, the game sold well. People liked it and would have liked the sequel, I feel. But it just is one of those anomalies in gaming where they tried something different. It succeeded. But the cost of developing something different was so, so much of a sacrifice, right? Too much of an investment, too much stress, too many problems to then continue on with it. So, so I mean, today, as I'm sure many of you have seen, there are games that have really good mocap and really good facial scan, but they never actually use that technology again, right? I think that's just, like, Rockstar owns it, but have you ever seen a game that uses that level of facial recognition ever? I don't think so. You know? <clears throat> Jasper, you're back, buddy. Hello. What's going on, buddy? What do you do? What are you up to? Hmm? Did that kitty bother you again? Or did that kitty take off not around anymore? Hmm? What's up? What's going on? He's just staring at me. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I received a $5 tip. From the Mysterious Stranger Guitar Riff Plays. Thank you, Mysterious Stranger, yet again, with a, a contribution to support my Fallout stream today. Thank you. That is actually the biggest tip of the day so far, so we get you on the leaderboard for that. Funny enough, I, st I still have never used the Mysterious Stranger perk in a Fallout game. Maybe, maybe next time, because we have never done it, maybe the next time I play a Fallout game, I should commit to Mysterious Stranger. Maybe we will. <clears throat> have I ever played the true crime games? No. The closest was I played, uh, um, anyone remember the game? I can't remember. It was the, the game uh, that was like GTA, but it was, you know, set in, uh, I think it was set in Hong Kong. I can't remember the name of it now. Shit. You guys remember what I'm talking about? I played the original, and then I played when they remade it later, years later. Sleeping Dogs, thank you. Lilica, it was called Sleeping Dogs. That originally was supposed to be a true crime game, but then the studio closed, and it got passed through a bunch of hands, and then eventually they made it, and it was a hit, and then the studio closed anyway. The next studio closed. Sleeping Dogs, yeah. So that was a great game, and I, I really enjoyed it, but I've never played any of the previous... Uh, you know, true crime games. <clears throat> How do I know all this gaming lore? I've been a gaming YouTuber for 16 years. You pick up a few things. Yeah. yeah I've been around the block. I know all about this shit. In another 20, 10, 15 years, I'll know dumb gaming lore from now. We'll all be able to laugh at how stupid Fortnite was. Right? We'll all be able to like, Among Us, the fuck is that? What are you talking about? Five nights in Freddy's. Five turds in Freddy's toilet. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, anything else, guys? It's 12.30. About the time when I would look to end the show, but we don't have to end the show. If you have more things to discuss, we can keep going for a bit. Uh, you just got to tag me, or again, if shout-outs, uh, if, if any contributions come in, or we can adjourn it and start to get ready for Fallout 4. <clears throat> when I worked out, what was my favorite body part to work out? I did not have a favorite body part to work out. I didn't favorite my body parts. Oh, my left delt was my favorite body part to work out. Of course. What are you talking about, man? Ugh. Oh, ay yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did all exercises. I did the curls, right? I did the bench press, squats. I did the... I'm trying to remember exactly which ones I did and which ones I didn't do. 
I did a ton. Like I was I did a ton of different exercises back then, actually. Oh, the one where you bend over, you just have the one arm coming up like this and you alternate. I did those. I did a whole bunch of exercises. Because I told you, my dad, in the basement of our house, he had a whole weight set. And he had all these posters of exercises and things. So I just basically did those based on... He he showed me the basics. And I would just basically do that stuff. And I, I buffed up like crazy. I was actually drinking those um, uh, whey protein uh, smoothie things. I would buy them from like like GNC. And I would t take that and I, I would be working out. And I buffed way up. Like, uh, uh, no exaggeration, I had no muscles at all when I was in high school. I was just like a string bean. Zero muscles. This arm, I know you laugh, like, oh, you don't have a big muscle now, right? I don't have a big muscle now. But you see the muscle I have? I had nothing. This was like a twig, like zero muscle to my arm at all in high school. And then when I worked out, I ended up getting muscle. And I kind of retained some of that over the years. I still have the little muscle I have is because I worked out. And it's, it's good that I kind of kept I kept it because, like I said, I was so effing skinny in high school. And then after that, I buffed up. <clears throat> I'm sorry you don't feel good today, Jade. I hope you feel better, man. I hate to hear that when you're not when you're not uh, feeling too good. So I, I wish you the best. I hope that you feel better. Game Boy, I totally understand what you're saying. He says it might be a good idea to read all contributions as they come in during a podcast. The problem is on a particular podcast, I usually have a, an agenda of things I want to cover. For example, today, I wanted to talk about how re the React show went. I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to talk about, you know, multiverses coming up and the announcements this morning about it and that I'm going to cover them. And then I wanted to talk about the upcoming game events and how to cover them because I need feedback. If I started immediately doing shout outs for contributions, we would have immediately gotten derailed. And then who knows if and when we would have gotten to those topics. So I feel like it's important on a show like this, if I have important topics that I need to hit upon first, I should do that first and then get the shout outs. And I, I agree with you. It may upset someone who wants immediate recognition, but that's really kind of not what the show's about, you know? <clears throat> Did working out cause my back issues? No, no, no. I had, ba my back issues came much later. My back issues came in the late 2000s. My, I was working out, you know, hardcore for like one to two years in the early 2000s. Yes, I experienced physical bullying and intimidation when I was in uh, high school, constantly. In, in reality, that's one of the reasons that actually convinced me to start working out. Because I was so skinny in high school that I said, man, I, you know, maybe if I actually worked out and started buffing up and I could defend myself that people wouldn't bully me around. And that's when I started buffing up and I gained, no exaggeration, I probably gained like 20 pounds of muscle just by working out. You know, I was a super skinny dude. Uh, Syndicator says, are you still thinking about GeForce now? I tried the free basic tier, the latency was barely noticeable. It only pixelated for only a little bit. Uh, it might be something to consider. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, what do you think? You think, because GeForce Now, for those who don't know, it's a cloud-based streaming service. You stream to a PC, okay? So I could get GeForce Now Premium for like $15, $20 a month, stream it to my mini PC, which should be able to handle it, and we could test it and see how it works. You know, maybe it would be really, really good. My internet just got upgraded, so now I have much faster download speeds. So maybe I would actually be able to do it. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we could test it over the, maybe it's an interesting project for over the summer, when things start to slow down, then maybe we can, you know, mess around with it, you know? Did working out end up making a difference with, with bullies? Yeah, like... Again, this was my early 2000s. So, you know, I was in my, like, like late teens, early 20s. I went from being the guy who was bullied in school to the guy who everyone just stayed the fuck away from. Like, no one wanted to mess with me because I actually had, like, buffed up a bit. And they were like, oh, shit. You know? <laughs> Let's stay away from it, you know? Like, seriously. Like, that, and those are, like, kind of those early days of me traveling, early 2000s, traveling around playing Street Fighter. And, you know, then I became, then I became an asshole. Then I became, like, a big-headed asshole talking shit online, probably as a result of buffing up a bit and working out, and I thought I was hot shit. 
right? So here I am talking shit online constantly to everyone on, under the sun about Street Fighter, and it was really stupid. I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> GeForce Now also has a day pass, which is cheaper, and you could try it out for one day. Interesting. We can do that, right? What am I looking forward to more? Fallout 5 or Elder Scrolls 6? I mean, at this point, there's a lot of Fallout content available. There's not a lot of Elder Scrolls. You know what I'm saying? Like... At any point, I can play Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4. I can even dabble in Fallout 76. With Elder Scrolls, it's like, well, you got Oblivion, you got Skyrim, but I just played those. It's like, what else do you play? There's nothing. I would I would love Elder Scrolls, a new Elder Scrolls. Too bad we're probably like a decade out, right? <clears throat> Bedjo Carrot did a super chat and says, uh, what's up? Uh, he says, hope you are well, my friend. What's your favorite movie and, f and favorite band? I don't have a favorite movie or favorite band. I don't play favorites. If you wanted to ask me, like, what was your favorite comedy movie of the 1980s, I'd be like, Ghostbusters. But I don't have overall favorites. I'm not that kind of person. I'm the kind of person that likes to go between things that you like in moderation. Like foods, I don't have a favorite food. I like various different kinds of foods, and I like to have them from time to time and variate between them so I never get tired of them. <clears throat> If I just worked out what I've done gym vlogs, no. I would not have done gym vlogs. <laughs> That's so silly. The thing about exercise is, for me anyway, when I got into exercise, once you get past the hurdle of making it a regular part of your schedule and the initial weeks to months of it kind of being painful because you're not used to doing it, once you get past that and it becomes a regular part of everything, it's actually good to do. It's fun to do. Like, you start to get addicted to that feeling that they call the burn, right? You start to burn in your muscle, and it's, oh, I like that feeling. I like the feeling of it's burning, and now it's, it's healing and building up more protein and everything. It feels good after a while. You just have to get used to it. Most people, just they're, they're la lazy, complacent. They're not used to exercise. Once you get used to it, it feels it actually feels fun and good. It's something you want to do. You desire the next workout. <clears throat> but you have to get to that point. And a lot of people can't get past that initial hurdle, right? Like right now, I know if I had if I had time to get into a regular workout routine, I would very enjoy it. I know I would. I've done it, I've done it times in my life. I actually really like working out. It's fun. And again, you, you can do things. You can like listen to the videos or you know, listen to music while you're doing it. So it's not even like you're just doing dedicated to that. You can do other things you find pleasurable while you're working out. There's, you know, it's it's fun, but you got to get to that point where you have my, for my problem right now is time. If I wanted to regularly work out, I really don't have the time to regularly work out because I'm, I'm working so much. <clears throat> Looks like we have some impersonators, guys, just so everybody knows. FYI. So just be careful. But it looks like there's a few people in chat who are trying to impersonate other people who were regulars in chat on purpose. It looks like my moderators have picked up on it and, and got a few of them out of here this morning, which is good. Uh, don't be fooled by people who are trying to impersonate others, okay? Uh, Alec91, 16 months as a member, said, what was your what was your PRs for bench squats deadlifts? I don't know. I did. I I have to keep explaining. I weightlifted in the early two thousands, about twenty years ago. I don't have records. I have no recollection of any of the weights or reps or anything that I did twenty years ago. I have absolutely no fucking clue. <laughs> I did not record that. I never fathomed. All right, that in the early two thousands, when I was in my early twenties. Now I'm in my forties. When I was in my early twenties, that twenty years later there would be a stream of 400 people sitting here on a 
phantom site that didn't exist yet called YouTube who would ask me my statistics for when I was working out back then. Also, if you want to know the truth, I don't see the point in recording and bragging about that shit. It's supposed to be your personal goals, your personal growth, your personal, you know? It's not about, oh, I gotta fucking share that with people on the internet to brag about it. I think that's silly, right? It's just funny because this is what happens when you're a public figure like this. I'll give you a perfect example. I'll tell you right now, there's something that's going to be coming up later this year, that documentary from June the King, okay? When he was making and working on the documentary about me, which, by the way, I think he's finished it. It's just that now it's getting, like, produced, like it's getting uh, put together and edited and everything. So there were times when he would hit me up with questions, all right? And, like, here's a, an actual question he asked me. So, where did you get the figure for the value of the PC that Chris Furtado made for you that you said was a lemon? He hit me with that question, and I'm like, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. Like, I think I based it upon the fact that he originally had given me a quote, but then he kept hitting me up with the desire for more money over the development of the PC, and I had to keep sending him more money via PayPal. But you're asking me a question that applies to like 2010 in 2024. I don't remember. And unlike maybe him, I don't have any receipts. Like I didn't save anything 14 years ago to prove what I spent on a PC. So you're making a documentary about me about something that happened 14 years ago and you're asking me a specific question. There's literally no way I could have any actual knowledge or evidence of anything that you're asking me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have detailed workout regimen information about workouts I did in the early 2000s. I never fathomed that in 2024 someone would ask me that question. When Chris Furtado was making me a fucking PC in 2010, number one, I probably never expected that it would have issues. And number two, I didn't think that it would be a big issue for people on the internet that I need to like document that information. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, who would have thought in 2010 when I was just burgeoning, like becoming a prominent YouTuber, that years later, someone would ask me for the specifics of that. I have no idea, you know? So that's that's kind of the, sadly, the double-edged sword of being a public persona is that you can talk about stuff, but how will you ever have justification of any of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have, I don't have anything. How would I have evidence of anything that I say about these things? These are just stories I can tell you, but it's not anything that I can back up. How the fuck would I ever do that? No one ever thought that there was going to be a YouTube and uh, and YouTubers and live streamers and people, you know what I'm saying? And then people would question everything you say and want evidence of it. You know, maybe if I had known that, I would have literally documented every single possible thing that I ever did and had rooms full of fucking documents and receipts to back up every statement I ever made, right? But I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that. So, like, I know, I know it's going to happen, right? Like, so when that documentary comes out later this year... It's just going to be a bunch of negative shit that people have said about me over the years and just literally no way to defend myself to it. I'm like, I don't know. Either I say, yes, it definitely happened. I'm bad. That was my fault. Or I literally don't remember. I can't t sell, tell you. Right? So that's life, though. When you guys ask me these crazy questions about stuff from the past, I'm like, how could I possibly answer that? Right? <laughs> how? You know? <clears throat> It's funny, I remember years ago, <clears throat> people asked me about my school days, and I said, well, I was the valedictorian of both my elementary school and my high school. And everyone's like, Phil's too stupid to be valedictorian. There's no fucking way that he could possibly be valedictorian. Well, guess what they did? My trolls contacted my schools and actually asked specifically, was he valedictorian? And apparently they looked it up and answered, yeah, he is. He was, he was in the, he's in the yearbook. We have the yearbook. Yeah, he was the valedictorian. But that's what I mean. People actually, like, oh, they don't believe anything I say. Everything's a lie. We need corroboration on everything Phil says. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> Guys are brutal, vicious people on the internet. Anyway, Vejo Carrot did another super chat and says, I'm buying Street Fighter 6 tomorrow. Do you have any character recommendations who I should start with? I'm new to the game. You know, I don't know because it's all changing on Wednesday. On Wednesday is the big rebalance. So... You know, the easiest characters to play, Ken, Luke, uh, Cammy, Jury, Guile, to some extent. Those are the easy characters to play. And they're godlike. Like, they're super duper good. 
but that doesn't mean you're gonna enjoy those characters. You know, an easy mode character used to be Honda, but now apparently they're nerfing Honda and he's not gonna be good anymore. So I can't even really answer those those questions until we, we get to the, the rebalance being out and everyone has a chance to get their hands on it, right? Um, Big Mac became a member. Thank you, Big Mac, for the membership. Noct says, didn't you have a chance to defend yourself with the Mike Plum doc but turned it down? How exactly? Again, like let's hypothetically let's say I did the Mike Plum documentary. So you got someone from back in the day, let's say it was someone from the Street Fighter community who would come out and be like, yeah, Dark Side Phil was an asshole. He did this and this. So what would I do? I would either say, that's a lie or that's true. How would I prove it? How do you prove something that happened 20 years ago that no one documented? There's no video back then of anything. It's a bunch of people typing on forums. It's a bunch of people in chat rooms that weren't backed up. And it's things that happened in real life in tournaments that weren't recorded. So how would you actually back, like, what, what's the point? It's like, okay, this guy said something bad about me. Man, 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 that's not true, right? <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway, we've gone very long on the podcast. People are now redirecting the podcast in a million other directions. But I actually think that it's time for us to adjourn. People are now saying, in Street Fighter 6, everyone's getting buffed. Cracker Jack says, thanks for your streams lately. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you, Cracker Jacks. I think it's time to adjourn, shall we? All right, everyone, thank you for a great show. Good variety of topics discussed. We got tomorrow. Let's let's continue tomorrow, shall we? Let's continue tomorrow with all these topics. I'm down for that. Um, but thank you for a great show. I hope you've enjoyed. And uh, oh, Jesus, what the hell's that? Anyway, I gotta start. I gotta remove that. It's scary. It's starting to scare. Look, that's my reaction. That's my honest reaction to the picture. I gotta start changing stuff around. I think I will. I think I'll put some of the Street Fighter pictures into the pre-stream now. And I'll take out that disgusting, filthy one. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the Level 1 Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow.